As you can see from the title, um, my contribution focuses on the, the use of school photographs as a resource uh, for designing educational activities uh, of um, innovative and creative nature, in, uh, both in the museum and in schools. Um, I refer to both contexts because um, schools, on the one hand, are the, the, the privileged place where the photographic heritage is um, a resource easy to find. On the other hand, uh, I will refer to the museum context because the, the Museum of the School History of the University of Macerata is the testing ground where my colleague and I have been developing um, educational activities based on the historical educational heritage, including school photographs. Um, uh, I naturally, um, I am um, uh, the currently I am the um, deputy director, but overall I am the responsible, the coordinator of educational service services of this museum, the Museum of School History Paolo and Ornella Ricca, in the university at the University of Macerata. Uh, my colleague Fabio Targhetta is the acting director. And uh, this is our laboratory, as you can understand. So um, I will illustrate in particular how um, historical school photographs can be exploited in historical, uh, educational and multidisciplinary projects aimed at creating new digital artifacts, such as the so-called historical photo mashups. We will see together what I'm talking about. Um, a short premise um, um, is necessary when we think about school photographs. Uh, immediately, uh, um, an endless and stereotyped series of school group photos <clears throat> comes to our mind. And, and educators would say, but how oh, such a stereotyped and in some way, in some ways, banal object can become the starting point of an educational project, which is effective and, and, and involving overall at the same time. Um, actually, the international historical uh, educational research over the last 15 years has analyzed in depth uh, the value of school photographs as historical sources able to add new knowledge to the historical research. These efforts have resulted in a comprehensive reflection on the variety of subjects and situations represented, and more importantly, on the aims of school photographs, whether they are produced for internal purposes or for a public circulation and consumption. The variety and the richness of school photographs has been also confirmed, for example, in Italy, by the huge work of digitization, cataloging and indexing carried out by a research institution of the Ministry of Education, INDIRE, is the National Institute for Documentation, Innovation and Educational Research, uh, holds um, a, a photo library of 40,000 school photographs, as you can understand. Um, the, the, they, are, they have worked for many years about this huge heritage. And the screenshot on this screenshot shows how many descriptors, only for the, the letter A, because uh, uh, the descriptors are um, organized in uh, alphabetical order, how many descriptors have been created to accurately label and classify school photos. Thanks this describe cataloging and uh, indexing photographs school photographs thanks to his, this work school photographs uh, for school photographs have really revealed to be a complex object which can be used not only by historians as a documentary source but also by teachers as an educational resource in this perspective historical school photos allow you to make comparisons between the school culture of the past and the present, and can be used to make history teaching more engaging and more personal for the students of today, as we will see in a while. Uh, but without going into detail, we can say that the variety of school photographs depends on the subjects presented, uh, groups of students and teachers, 
or students without teachers, uh, school activities, um, daily lessons or school trips, uh, school buildings and facilities depicted with, with people or without. The situations present, represented form a situation, a lesson, an experiment or a gym session put on stage official and public events or celebration, for example, the opening of a new school, informal situations, school parties. The aims of photographs, the photographs can be uh, destined to an external circulation or an internal use. And authors, photos can be uh, realized, can be commissioned by the school to a professional, especially in the past, uh, can be realized by teachers for uh, pedagogical documentation aims uh, can be made by students or can be made by others. Obviously, this um, classification is only um, suggestive and the categories indicated can be strictly interconnected or mutually in exclusive or can evolve over time and so on. Let's think, for example, about the first school day in the past, this was a formal event, which was immortalized by professional photographer, photographers and commissioned by the school. In more recent times, it became a less formal event, celebrated with a Polaroid photo taken by a family member. Nowadays, finally, it can be represented through a selfie taken with a smartphone. Although general, this grid can help us reflect on the complexity underlying the process of conception, creation and circulation of school photographs. What are school photographs? Now that we are aware of the variety of these objects, let us, let's briefly recall in which deposits can we find these objects for our educational purposes. First place are school, is the school archives and the yearbooks published by the school, local and state libraries and archives, private archives, especially of former teachers and alumni as well. Photographic atelier, due to the aforementioned reasons, the historic archives of local photographic studios can turn out to be a rich mine of sources. Um, social network and website. Nowadays, the internet has become a huge archive in progress where alumni or local residents frequently upload and share school photos. The added value of these virtual communities is that photographs are usually provided with historical facts, historical data. Um, antique mark, antiques market, when the above mentioned archives are dismembered, they arrive on the antiques market, unfortunately, uh, such photos have almost always lost the, their historical data and context information. And finally, specialized or generalist photo libraries. Mm, um, we have already mentioned uh, the Indire, huge mm, the photo library, but also other generalist um, archive and photo libraries exist. For example, in Italy, there is the, the, the uh, huge um, photo library of the, uh, the historical archives of the Alinari uh, photo atelier, which holds five millions of items and is one of the largest photographic collection in the world. Uh, photographs gen in general um, are often used in education, in school, in schools as well as as well as in museums with the aim to develop competencies in observation analysis and interpretation on, of images the, the so-called visual liter literacy as well as to stimulate attention and enhance learning in history or other subjects in addition school photographs can be used for example to build a visual history of the school to promote digitization and conservation projects, to offer exhibitions or other events focused on the school, which is the school is a social object that is an object able to catalyze the attention of families, inhabitants and different generations of the community around the school. All these activities imply that students increase their knowledge and competencies in the historical, linguistic or relational ambit. But working on school photos 
can become more exciting, exciting and creative, for example, by adopting the technique of historical photo mashups. But what is a mashup? And what is a photo mashup and a historical photo mashup? <laughs> Literally, mashup means the combination of different materials. It can be a video produced by mixing parts of other videos or a song made in the same way. It can also be a website or a web application which combines contents from multiple sources already existing on the web, images, databases, maps or other multimedia objects. The final aim is to create something new, a new content or a new service. This is an example of uh, an old now closed um, photo sharing website, Panoramio, which allowed people to share their own photos of a place by combining the geotagging systems of Google Earth and Google Maps. Following the same principle, a photo mashup is a sort of collage. It's realized by mixing different photos with a provoking intent, especially in arts or in advertising as well. A historical photo mashup is something different because it, it, it is made by combining an old photo with a modern photo of the same place, building, landscape, and so on. Here you can see the result of uh, the overlaying of an old photo with a modern street view from History Pin. History Pin is um, a crowdsources platform where users can upload a historical photo of a place, they can pin it to Google Maps, and finally, they can overlay in Google Street View. Uh, everything in History Pin is a mashup, as you can see, the website and the contents as well, and the results are stunning. Uh, History Pin was opened in 2011, but it was preceded by important experimentation uh, experimentations which make us better understand what historical photo mashups are and their potentials for our educational work. One of the earliest examples is represented by a marketing campaign that the History Channel commissioned in 2004 to the artist and photographer Seth Terrace. The campaign was entitled Know Where You Stand and the mashups realized with photographs, but also with videos as well. And the videos are really amazing. And these uh, mashups allow, allow the observer to literally see the past and the present simultaneously in the same image. The most spectacular effect of this digital photo blending is that people and events of the past uh, seem not only to come back to life, but even to get in touch with people and situations of today. Uh, with regard to the technique used, uh, as you can see, uh, these mashups are the results of a digital superimposing, that is to say a digital uh, graphic re-elaboration of two photographs which are aligned and lawyered in order to create a sort of photographic collage. But I don't like the term collage because the result when we work, we work with historical photographs is something more than a simple collage because it stimulates in an intellectual and emotional way, emotional way, a deepest reflection on the historical meaning of places. As we can see also in other projects, over the years, in fact, many other photographers, photographers have tried out this technique and obtained results of great visual and emotional impact. Noteworthy to mention is the project Looking into the Past, developed, it developed in 2009 by Jason Powell on Flickr. Flickr is, uh, as you perfectly know, a social network focused on photo sharing. Uh, the project is still today accessible on the platform where you can where you can admire both the original photo galleries by Powell, Jason Powell and other new galleries. This image belongs to the project on the September the 11th, 2001 attacks. 
as you can see, the power Powell used uses the technique of the handmade superimposing is it, this technique is different. Um, the then and now effect is obtained by holding an old an old photograph in front of the same location today and then photographing the juxtaposition. In fact, the end of the photo photographer appears in the image. This uh, in some way suggests the creative role of the author and the results are stunning or all, all the same. The, in, on Flickr you can read the, the comments of the, the user which are um, interesting uh, as this, this, so interesting as the original mashup which is proposed by Jason. Another example that could be of inspiration for us is Detroit Urbex. Um, Detroit Urbex is a, a participatory project of a urban exploration. Uh, this project was carried out by a, a group of anonymous uh, citizens of Detroit who decided to pho photograph the abandoned urban structures and to superimpose old photos representing the city at, at its economic and social peak. The aim was to document the past, the present and the future of their own city. Even though the project was not specifically focused on schools, the mashups and the so-called then and now galleries portray portraying school buildings are particularly impressive. This project was closed in 2011, but the website and as well as the Facebook page are still accessible so you can find more and more photographs and inspiration. The two photographs on the right uh, refer to the Cass Technical High School. It was abandoned in 2009 and demolished in 2011. These mashups have been realized with the images that the, the, uh, the, the photographers have found in the yearbooks, um, which um, they found again in the yearbook in the yearbook rooms of the school. So they used the photos from the yearbooks and they depicting the daily life of students, teachers, students, teachers, but also librarians and so on. And they superimposed on the today photographs. The result is really touching and it offers an example of what what impact a historical mashup can provoke in whoever is looking at this photograph. But even more significant is this, the emotional impact that these images, these mashups can exert on those who have really known and frequented the, those places. Just such emotional lever can be usefully exploited in an, uh, in an educational activity. But now that we have seen some examples, let's briefly see how, how to realize historical photo mashups. Uh, making a photo mashup is a process consisting, uh, consisting, consisting of four phases. Uh, the first one is finding, finding historical photographs. This is the most difficult phase, especially if you are looking for a specific typology of subject represented. The second phase is the digital restoration. Uh, you can need to improve the quality of your old photograph, both when you create a digital superimposing or when you create a handmade superimposing, as in this case. Um, in fact, in this case, you may, maybe you need to reprint the photo before maybe making the, super, the, the handmade superimposing. Um, the, but there are many uh, software which allow, allow, allow you to improve the quality of the old photographs. The third phase is the shooting phase. You have to find the exact location of each historical photo and try to recreate the same framing and perspective of the old shooting. The last phase is the photo editing. 
in digital superimposing, you can obtain the best alignment possible when you make all the points and angles of the image match with the other one. Photo editing software allow you to make to make it because they offer many tools, resize, alter, distort, and perspective correction. This phase can take a long time, but it is a creative and gratifying moment. Uh, each phase actually implies the acquisition and implementation of different skills and competencies of technological nature when using a digital camera or your smartphone as well. Um, uh, or, or when, or when you take the picture, or when you re-elaborate digital images with a photo editing or software. But also the transversal skill of creativity is involved. Photography is a visual art, and the mashup is the result of a process of analysis, visual interpretation, and creation of something new which did not exist before, if not only in our imagination. Uh, now, um, I'm going to conclude by illustrating two activity, ex experimental activities that we carried out in our museum. The first one is a, a pilot project focused on photo mashups. It was implemented in 2017 in collaboration with a middle school in Macerata. In a first phase, students took part in a workshop of visual literacy where they acquired the competencies necessary to analyze and correctly interpret a photographic image. They acquired also the principles of the composition technique um, and of digital photography with a, a tablet or a smartphone. Yeah, they are using a tablet. In the second phase, the teacher and their students selected a series of photographs of urban landscape of Macerata dating back to 1930s. The photos belongs to a, a collection, by, a historical collection by the local photo, photographer Carlo, Carlo Balelli, and are still preserved by the municipal library, which granted the school permission to use these images. The third phase consisted in them finding the original locations. Uh, over the years, in fact, the urban landscape has changed, but students were able to recon the locations, and in this process, to analyze the historical transformations of places. The final challenge, but also the most active and creative phase, was making the mashup. The technique chosen, as you can see, uh, is, was the handmade, handmade superimposing, you can see. And students had to respect the original distances, proportions, and angles when making the alignment. In a word, they had to find the exact position of the photographer of the past. Uh, in, in short, when aimed at the historical mashup, the photo shooting becomes a real cognitive act uh, that develops through different stages and allows students to learn and practice the art of seeing and to learn the grammars of the visual language as well. The last, the last project is linked with a, a disappeared school. So it is linked to the topic, even though we have not yet ma made our historical photo mashup. Um, among, among the various experiences um, that I analyzed, I was impressed by the work of uh, an Australian photo photographer, Ross Ryan, who in 2014 superimposed old and current photos of three disappeared rural schools of the 19th century, all abandoned or demolished between the 40s and the 70s. In addition to realizing a wonderful image, wonderful image, the author also provided for each photo an accurate reconstruction of the history, the location, and other historical information. But when we look uh, at um, an image of this uh, typology, the question is, uh, what is the value and the aim of uh, such an elaboration? As observed in, in the comments from Flickr users, these in mashups can impact, actually can impact both on old and young generations as well. If in seniors, in fact, such pictures 
elicit the narration of autobiographical memories linked with their childhood and with their own school experience, in the young, the same image provokes a surprise and the sense of curiosity. And this, this was what exactly happened with the, the photos of a disappeared school in Macerata. The black and white photograph on the right appeared on Facebook in 2016 and provoked several requests from the Facebook users about what seemed to be a little, a little wooden schoolhouse play, <clears throat> sorry, placed in the middle um, of the public gardens of Macerata. Here you can see a generic photo of the, the public gardens, a generic because the exact place where the old school stood, in fact, is still uncertain, is still unknown. Uh, when uh, this photo appeared, the oldest Facebook users, uh, the oldest witnesses, revealed that it was an open air school built in the 20s and still in use in the 60s. As a consequence, only some, a part of Macerata citizens remember the school. Uh, the others, the great part, not. But the contrast between the forgotten past depicted in this photo and the contrast with the press, a present which is free of any visible traces, triggered an increasing curiosity in an increasing number of users, adult and young as well. So we decided to intercept this curiosity by promoting a campaign on Facebook in other virtual communities and blogs, as well as among our university students and school students. The aim was to collect, to find and collect school memories, photos and other documents about this forgotten story. In 2017, we, in addition, we presented this topic to a high school history professor who wanted to make his students actively work on original sources and possibly with new technologies. He was fascinated, immediately fascinated by the photo of the wooden school and uh, also, also were student, his students. Students began investigating and, and found new original material. Uh, material of traditional nature, such as photos and school registers in libraries and historical archives of the town. But they also found a new material of digital and oral nature. In fact, they, following the, the threads in Facebook, they systematically collected the information Scattered, scattered in the Facebook posts, they got in touch with the authors of those posts and they interviewed them. As a result, they published a digital book with the original documentation produced, historical documentation produced. This experience not only confirms that all the school photographs can work as a powerful stimulus to spark interest in people of different generations, it also revealed how social media can amplify this potential and convey multiple processes of uh, recollection of the individual school memories as well as the collective memory of a community. Uh, this potential can be exploited in school projects focused once again on uh, then and then and now photo gallery, even of a dis uh, disappeared school. Uh, as a conclusion, um, historical photo mashups, historical photo mashups, which are different from photo mashups, uh, provoke us, they catch our attention, uh, they make us look at the well known places of our daily life in a, with new eyes. But overall, they, they make us reflect. Uh, they, they push on. Um, First of all, they push us to want to know more about the place and its history. Finally, they make us reflect on the way in which those places, well known or forgotten, 
have shaped our identity as individuals as, and as a members of a community, a national community, a local community, or a school communities, community as well. Um, Ryan, working with school photos, photographs, with historical school photographs, can turn into an exciting activity uh, by using the technique, for example, of photo mashupping and softwares for the uh, image digital manipulation. Um, the aim is to encourage students to apply in activities that allow them to develop in addition to the in addition to the competencies uh, linked to the historical research, visual analysis, narrative description, and cataloging digital or as well cataloging of uh, photographs um, that allow them also to increase transversal competencies linked to the artistic and creative use of the new technology. Photogra photo photography is a visual art. And uh, as Ken Robinson said, uh, creativity is about working in a highly focused way on ideas, on ideas and projects, crafting them into their best forms and making critical judgments along the way. It seems to me that this uh, definition describe, uh, describes uh, the process of the photo mashupping. Um, I have concluded. 